Uh, praise the Lord. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome to CMF Pariyaram meeting of today. We have chosen the topic of today as Kingdom of God. Now let us read Romans chapter 14, verse 17. For the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking, but of righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Now, uh, we'll discuss some things about the kingdom of God, similar to our Republic Day. Yes, we'll be having a Republic Day in, uh, the next day, 26th. So, Republic Day has some itineraries, as in the flag hoisting ceremony, the Republic Day parade, the Republic Day prizes are given, and there are the dignitaries or chief guests, and yes, it is a holiday. So, we'll be discussing briefly uh, uh, regarding this and then or and, and then we'll uh, come to the actual scripture of Matthew chapter 13 now it is a bit uh, different to compare something earthly with that of the kingdom of heaven but this is just for a quick recollection uh, kingdom of God is much much beyond what we can understand now regarding the flag hoisting ceremony yes there is a ceremony where the banner or Indian flag okay a lot of people are very proud of the Indian flag and things like that in the Bible we read in Exodus chapter 17 verses 11 to 13 as long as Moses held up his hands Israel prevailed but when he lowered them Amalek prevailed when Moses hand grew heavy they took a stone and put it under him he sat on it then Aaron and Hur held his hands up, one on each side, so that its hands remained steady until the sun went down. So Joshua overwhelmed Amalek and his army with the sword. Now, coming to the key verse. Next verse, 14 onwards. Then Lord said to Moses, Write this on a scroll as a reminder and recite it to Joshua, because I will utterly blot out the memory of Amalek from under heaven. And Moses built an altar and named it the lord is my banner indeed he said a hand was lifted up towards the throne of lord the lord will war against amalek from generation to generation now actually this is the hebrew hebrew exact hebrew uh, 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 writing and in that the uh, corresponding verse 15 is and Moses built an altar and called it the name of adonai nissi okay or jehovah nissi yes so what is our flag? Uh, again, flag? Our flag or our banner is Jehovah or uh, our Lord Jesus Christ and that is our flag. Yes. Now let's go to the Republic Day Parade. Yes. We have a beautiful uh, portion of the scripture. 2 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 14. But thanks be to God who always leads us as captives in Christ's triumphal procession and uses us to spread the aroma of knowledge of him everywhere. Yes, very powerful and encouraging verse. Thanks be to God who always leads us as captives in Christ's triumphal procession and uses us to spread the aroma of knowledge of him everywhere. Now, this, the subsequent verses are also important. For we are to God the sweet aroma of Christ among those who are being saved and to those who are perishing we are an order of death and demise. To the other, a fragrance that brings it. And who is qualified for such a task? For we are like, not like so many others who peddle the word of God for profit. On the contrary, in Christ we speak before God with sincerity as men sent from God. Yes. So regarding the price or the uh, parade, yes, we have a Christ triumphal procession and where we spread the aroma of knowledge and of him everywhere. And yes, this is to those who are saved, but to those who are perishing, we are, uh, might be a order of death and demise. Now, let us go on to the prices. Yes, we all know that it is written in the priestly service of God is our inheritance. Yes, we had, had this discussion about the inheritance in Christ and the great riches of Christ's glory. But let us read another scripture. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9 to 10. Or do you not know 
that the wrong doers will not inherit the kingdom of God. Do not be deceived, neither sexually immoral, nor the idolaters, nor adulterers, nor men who are sex and men, nor thieves, nor the greedy, nor drunkards, nor slanderers, nor swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. So we have some list of sins and those who will not inherit the kingdom of God. But beyond that, Matthew chapter 6 verse 33, Seek, but seek his first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you. Yes, we cannot talk about the kingdom of God without that righteousness. Yes, if we do read that we ourselves have no righteousness, we have this righteousness bestowed upon us by Christ's sacrifice on the cross and that we are all sinners and whatever righteousness we have comes from Christ. And another relevant portion of the scripture, Luke chapter 17 verse 20 to 21. One day the Pharisees asked Jesus, when will the kingdom of God come? Jesus replied, the kingdom of God can't be detected by visible signs. You won't be able to say, here it is, it's over there. For the kingdom of God is already among you. Yes, so we've been talking about the prices and how we are not supposed to do things. And we have to seek the righteousness of God. And the thing is, the kingdom of God, the prices or the riches of Christ, the glory are already amongst us. And the gifts of the spirit, fruits of the spirit are all amongst us. Yes, this is a book by Leo Tolstoy. Most of you would be knowing Tolstoy as author of War and Peace. So another book in the kingdom of God within him by Leo Tolstoy speaking about how uh, states states uh, affiliate themselves with or uh, in reverse uh, some Christian churches affiliate themselves with uh, politics uh, uh, political affiliations and, and they are uh, spreading propaganda similar to war or uh, or supporting war but scripturally the kingdom of god is amongst us and we are just supposed to seek his kingdom and lord's righteousness and not to seek war yes we do read in the psalms uh, that it is written for too long i have speaked among men who yearn for uh, who hate peace uh, i am a man of peace but when i speak they are for war so yes we live in such uh, war hungry, you can say yes, war hungry or trigger happy uh, uh, people. We do live among such people, but yes, we have to seek out the kingdom of God and his price. Yes, coming to the dignitaries, coming to the dignitaries of this, uh, uh, kingdom of God, or as I see. We usually have chief guests, chief guests of Republic Day pandemic. A lot of uh, famous people, uh, Nelson Mandela, Aung San Suu Kyi, and a lot of such people were guests of the Republic Day Parade. It's very uh, curious to note in 2021 there was no chief guest to the COVID pandemic. Or more specifically, they had sent a request to Boris Johnson, but uh, he could not reach. So there was no chief guest in 2021 at the public day due to the pandemic. And this year they have invited a lot of people. Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Tajikistan, Turkmenistan. Yes, all big, big people. Yes, all big, big people are called for this uh, dignitaries. But yes, we are all called to be dignitaries in Christ's uh, kingdom. In that God chooses ordinary people to do extraordinary works no matter how ordinary your occupation or your background is yes so we read in the book of amos yes i'll be uh, discussing a bit about the uh, book of amos in the subsequent slides yes if possible do go through the uh, cha few chapters of book of amos uh, in that ch chapter one is an announcement of judgment of god upon the kingdoms and we find that Amos, Amos chapter 7 verse 14 says, I was neither a prophet nor the son of a prophet, but I was a shepherd. I also took care of the sycamore fig trees. So yes, Amos was a lay person, but a man of God, and that his life was devoted to the Lord, and his lifestyle showed his devotion. Yes, 
so uh, it not come from uh, royalty or uh, very academia but yes he spoke the word of god and god chose such ordinary people ordinary people to extraordinary was in moses yes even moses who was initially brought up okay so initially if we read yes moses when he was in the pharaoh uh, uh, or with the pharaoh's daughter during that time he was very powerful in speech but he had to forget all that yes he had to unlearn all that thing again had to become or and yes had to be made ordinary first so that he could uh, do the will of god so in short we cannot fill a cup that is already full so you must necessarily empty ourselves to be able to receive god's righteousness and peace and then we can do great things for them and we'll be that chief guess what yes uh and it's a book of amos we we did read this verse seek his kingdom and his righteousness now we do read in uh, new testament but in the, even the old testament okay amos chapter 5 verse 4 uh, and seek me and live seek the lord and live seek good not evil that you may live hate evil love good so yes seek the lord seek the righteousness that is uh, even in the old testament and that's a mandate it's a biblical mandate here yes, chapter 5 is a call for repentance yes and i amos lamented the destruction by singing a funeral song yes any society that exploits the poor and defenseless and hates truth is bent on destroying itself in that they are going away from that righteousness of god going away from that kingdom of god which is already amongst them and this will lead to trouble later on now yes matthew chapter 6 verse 33 but seek his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be given to you as well yes we do know that our book day is a holiday at least for students and medical students yes we did not have psychiatry class for students today so it's a holiday now let's uh, dear brothers and sisters yes prak day order we have this sabbath or day of rest no do we uh, do we take a day of r- to rest and worship god at least once a week or is making money more important to us than anything else now the question is yes yes uh, i'm done it, uh, talking of students uh, especially pgs and those graduates and uh, those on they might have duty but nonetheless do we spend adequate time worshiping god or giving time to the lord and we do read in chapter 8 of amos the vision of the ripe fruit where the israel is ripe for punishment as is brought and we have forgotten the sabbath and it goes on to say at time yes your sabbaths and new moons they are abhorrent to me lord says they are abhorrent that they do not uh, honor it they do not honor the, they do not honor the uh, day of the rest of the day they do not understand for them sabbath or tithes or uh the mandates of god is nothing more than burdensome and yes other portions uh, this another portions of the scripture uh, uh the lord says the lord says okay uh, people people were complaining that uh, it is futile to serve the lord uh, as people of israel were complaining it is futile to serve the lord and uh, can you imagine the lord okay who will really carry them, them through the, uh, the sea, sea uh, across the sea uh, while the uh, armies of the pharaoh were in pursuit and thus uh, great miracles were performed and still at times uh, people of israel said it's futile to serve the lord and they are saying like that and so that's why they were made abhorrent or their new moons and festivities is more for show and not for the reverence yes as not much a reverence yes uh, i'll quickly jump to a, uh, a story or a real life incident as said by a one uh, so a medicine professor who had been a chief guest or, or he was giving the a key message of our one of the same of conferences now 
so i was an md medicine he was uh, uh, about to take his md medicine exam md medicine final exam they had the department had given them a few days of study leave but before the study leave their professor had told him uh, guys uh, the some professor of aims actually uh, is a professor a medicine professor of aims i don't know exactly remember the query dr venkatajalam or something like that he is the, also the physician to the president is now the uh senior most person he is coming as your external examiner and he is a difficult examiner it's very difficult to pass and they say like that so all these medicine pgs were worried and apparently sir was saying uh his exam is around the first some of the few first days of the week and sir uh, was in the habit of not or uh, spending the whole uh, sunday most of the sunday in prayer he did not uh used to study much on uh, sundays sundays he'll mainly be praying and if he's not on duty he'll be uh, it will be spent in prayer and uh, reading the bible and also it was our, uh, from childhood onwards he's been like that uh, sundays uh, he did not do uh, much of uh, studies other than biblical study so that time also so time was limited and uh, no, but uh, sir said here is some early morning and during their Uh, bible message in church it was a he was saying it was exact message for him in that do not worry about things before it comes because our lord is a devil to deliver so so stop worrying and send that day in prayer next day the thing is that this vengata apparently president got sick or something and this vengata jalam sir did not come it was another exam they all passed so we have to understand that it is futile to worry about scenarios before they come Uh, nonetheless uh, we do uh, worry and we actually run through the possible scenarios and the possible uh, variations of how things could go before they actually happen so we have to again again ask ourselves do we rely on our verbal fluency to get through such a situation or do we rely on god's favor god's favor god's presence and uh, god's mercy to get us through these situations we have to contemplate so yes the important thing okay probably day might be a holiday but beyond that it, uh, we should be necessarily taking time it need not be single day you should necessarily spend time on the god and Uh, yes it may not be possible to have a result like sir okay we have want to study any anything on uh, sunday so it's not it's not like that yes that's uh, sir so sir the thing is we should give adequate time uh, across the week uh, for the lord yes now dear brothers and sisters we have quickly run through uh, some of the aspects of the kingdom of god in that there is a flag hoisting yes uh jehovanesi the lord our banana we got in the parade republic day parade we are uh, captives in christ triumphal procession and yes we talked about dignitaries how which god chooses ordinary people and we did uh, read about the prices how what all we should not do and yes in that we should seek the kingdom of god and his righteousness and where do we get that righteousness we get it from the christ jesus and yes we quickly read how it is important that being a whole day you know, should uh, spend uh, time with god or give the adequate time for god yes matthew chapter 13 matthew chapter 13 uh, specifically speaks about uh, some specific aspects of the kingdom of god or christ is okay uh, the kingdom of, of like mustard seed kingdom of, uh, so we'll just run through these verses i'll not be uh, explaining this in detail we'll just run through this and maybe uh in the subsequent weeks we can discuss so matthew chapter 13 verse 10 to 12 then the disciples came to jesus and asked why do you speak to the people in parables he replied the knowledge of the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven have been given to you but not to them who has will be given more and he will have an abundance who does not have even what he has will be taken away from Yes, keywords. Knowledge of the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven have been given to you, not to them. Dear brothers and sisters, even in Old Testament, Deuteronomy chapter twenty-nine and twenty-nine, the secret things belong to the Lord our God, but the things are revealed to us and to our children forever. Let me follow all the words of this law. 
Yes, so the people of Israel were Jews. They were, in a sense, racist in that they believe that they were very special. Yes, they were special chosen one. But yes, even Abraham, the, uh, the all of the nations, all of the nations will be blessed through Abraham. Yes, promises initially came uh, through Abraham, Abraham and his seed. But this and this seed means one person, and that is Christ. So through that one person that is Christ this promise and the uh, mysteries of the kingdom of God or kingdom of heaven have been revealed to everyone so it is so in today's uh, scenario okay uh, it is kingdom of someone that we can enter into or enter into that rest that God promised by believing in Christ yes now that is uh, uh, one aspect of the kingdom of heaven Another aspect, chapter 13, verse 24-26, Jesus put before them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while everyone was asleep, his enemy came and sowed weeds amongst the wheat and slipped away. When the wheat sprouted and bore grain, the weeds also appear. And you want to read how the master says, let both the weeds and the uh, wheat grow and when it is ripe we will cut off the weeds and burn them so it's like that even amongst uh, the kingdom of God also uh, unfaithful people have corrupted in, but the fruit okay they will be known by the fruit yes we do read in a similar, similar church how Jesus curses the fig tree because it did not bear fruit and it withers anyway we'll go to the uh, next verse Matthew chapter 13, verse 31 to 32. He put before them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that a ma man planted in his field. Although it is the smallest of all seeds, yet it grows to be the largest of garden plants and becomes a tree, so that the birds of air come and nest in its branches. Yes, something small, but something very... Uh, uh, important that's a mustard seed yes another parable uh, chapter 13 verse 33 the kingdom of heaven is like the leaven that a woman took and mixed into three meshes of four flour until all of it was leavened and yes another uh, important verses kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field when a man found it he hid it again and in his joy he went and sold all he had and bought the field and again, kingdom of heaven is like merchants in search of fine pearls. And he found one precious pearl. He went away and saw Lord he had and bought it. Now, you might think, okay, why is, uh, isn't that a bit uh, silly? Okay, this man who found the uh, treasure, he could have uh, say, bargained with the owner and said, see, I found this. It was in your field. Let's make it 50-50. But beyond that, what is this? Uh, if you go into the, you know, why did he, did he, he did, why did he hide it and uh, so sold that there? See, it's, it's olden times. You cannot immediately, just like uh, these days, you cannot sell everything immediately and come. So probably when he comes, uh, the landscape would have changed things like that. But what? Because this man was sure that this is not just one treasure. There will be a lot of treasure in that field. So yes. Not just want to see. We all have that miracles or blessings about one point or another. But when we stop getting mir that miracles or new miracles or he, something bad happens to us, we uh, get discouraged. But see, here, a man, he went and sold all he had and bought the field because he was sure that there are a lot of treasure. See, dear brothers and sisters, there is no limit to the treasures or the promises we have in the Christ and the, his promises. Yes. So yes, the kingdom of heaven and yes, the merchant in search of uh, fine pearls. And how it is very important and should be surpassing all that we have. Yes, once again, kingdom of heaven is like a nest that was cast into the sea and caught all kinds of fish. When it was full, the men pulled it ashore. They sat down, so that a good fish into containers, but threw the bad away. So yes, uh, we didn't read about the, uh, initially, yes, uh, actually this chapter also has the parable of a sower. You all would be very familiar with the parable of a sower, so I'm not uh, explaining in uh, depth in that. So yes, please, let us all meditate on Matthew chapter 13 in the coming days. Uh,
and meditate on the kingdom of God. Uh, wishing uh, you all uh, uh, Republic Day, but yes, our kingdom is the kingdom of God. So, praise be to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen.